Coming alongside the new Tyranid Codex for 10th edition is the long-awaited, much-rumoured, monstrously big Norn-inspired units after things are known in the lore uh, the Norn Queens, and we aren't getting a Norn Queen, what we're getting is something that is sort of related to them in the Norn Emissary and the Norn Assimilator. These are both huge, incredibly important aspects of the hive mind. The Emissary is this key synaptic linchpin and psychic powerhouse, whilst the Assimilator is just pure out and out violence and aggression and brutality that the hive mind sends after a unit that it just wants to utterly obliterate. They are both absolutely gorgeous models. It is part of a dual kit so you can build either from the set and they both look fantastic. And in today's Warhammer Community article, we get a little look at the rules that they will be bringing into 10th edition. They both sport an identical stat line of a 10 inch move, toughness 11, 16 wounds, a brilliant 2 up save, and an OC of 5. So they are pretty solid all across the board in terms of their stats. They are fast, they are tough, they are decent at grabbing and holding objectives. The Emissary does also sport a fantastic 4 up invun to help keep it alive a little bit longer. It is, I guess, a shame the Assimilator doesn't seem to have an invun. But I do think that in 10th edition, with the generally reduced AP across the board, as well as cover all over the place, against a lot of the higher than AP0 attacks, you will probably be getting into these units. You are still going to get the benefit a bit of cover. So I do think that 2-up save will still serve you relatively well in keeping those 16 wounds alive and at least keeping you alive long enough to get into combat. But yeah, the, uh, the Emissary having that 4-up in Vun is really, really nice. I do wonder if the Assimilator is going to end up with a 5-up or a 6-up even, but certainly from what they've shown today, it doesn't look like that's the case, which is a bit of a shame, but I do think this thing is still going to be relatively survivable. In terms of the weapon options and abilities they have, the Emissary has its own Psychic Ranged Attack in the Psychic Tendril. This can fire in three modes, the Neuro Parasite, the Neuro Blast, or the Neuro Lance, each being good of course at a different thing. The Parasite is your precision anti-character style attack, it's 18 inch range, strength 8, minus 2 AP and D3 damage, and it does have two shots that hit on twos, so with this you do actually have a fairly solid chance of taking out those weaker leaders like Astra Militarum Commissars or Tau Fireblades, even some Marine HQs if you're lucky, they only tend to have four or five wounds, so you could potentially take out some Marine HQs with this with some slightly above average rolling or some rerolls, which we will get to in just a moment. The Blast is your anti-infantry, it's 2d6 shots with Blast at strength 6, minus 2 AP and 1 damage, so this is going to be really good against big enemy squads, enemy hordes, waves of orc boys, all that kind of stuff, this will do a good bit of damage against them. I think it averages around 6 or so dead orc boys against a 20 man squad, so it really isn't anything too shabby there. And then the Lance of course is your anti-elite, anti-vehicle version. It's strength 12, minus 3 AP, D6 damage, and it has Melter 2. So it's going to be doing a huge amount of damage to vehicles, especially within that 9 inch Melter range. And the fact that it can be doing up to a potential of 16 damage in total is going to make it a fairly scary prospect for enemy Rhinos or enemy Wave Serpents, even things like enemy Lehman Rust tanks. We'll have to be a bit wary around this thing. As has been mentioned before, the Assimilator does trade this psychic power for just pure aggression, and one of its many talents is hitting things with its Toxinjector Harpoon, which is all by itself a fairly scary attack. It's two shots at 12 inches that are strength 12, minus 3 AP and D6 plus 1 damage, so already it can do a relatively good number on enemy vehicles, but if you do get a hit on a monster or a vehicle, you then also get plus two inches to a charge roll against it. So it's kind of like the Furioso Dreadnought's Magna Grapple, but you can move up, do some decent damage to an enemy tank, and then get a much easier charge in in your following charge phase to finish it off in close combat. So this is going to make the Assimilator 
super fast and just able to get into combat against those tougher enemy targets like vehicles and monsters much more quickly than your opponent might expect. They then also both share a rule which is singular purpose, which is a very cool, very strategic ability that you choose at the start of the first battle round. And this can sort of impact how you are going to use this unit throughout the course of the game. You can either choose an enemy unit and get reroll hits and reroll wounds against it, which is just fantastic for targeting an enemy unit that you need to wipe out as soon as possible. Or if you are going for that neuroparasite attack, you can get rid of enemy characters that are in units much more easily now with those full rerolls. Or instead, you can choose an objective and when your Norn model is within range of it, they get a five up feel no pain and an OC value of 15. So if you want your emissary to just sit back and fire psychic shots around the board all game long, you could choose this one and then just sit there on a backfield or midfield objective and you would have a two up armor save, a four up in run, a five up feel no pain and OC value of 15. So you will just be able to sit there and know for almost certain that this objective is going to be yours pretty much all game long and it's going to be really, really hard for your opponent to get you off it. I think what I like about this is that they both do have their uses. Normally when there's an ability that increases your damage like reroll to hit and wound or one that improves your OC value, the reroll hit and wound one is just flat out better. This one is a bit more of a pick. I think the reroll to hit and to wound one is a bit more fire and forget. It's a bit easier and a bit more sort of straightforward to think about. So I do think that is still a little bit better, but having an OC of 15 as well as having that defensive buff of the five up feel no pain does make that second choice actually quite tempting in some situations. You know, if you really want your non unit to stay alive as long as possible, that feel no pain is going to make a big difference. And if you really do have an objective that you want to keep yours all game long, OC 15 is a big jump. Going from say five to eight is kind of like, eh, it's maybe not worth it because a squad of 10, even with OC1, can still outmuscle you. But OC15 is a big hurdle to overcome in terms of stealing an objective. So I do think that this second option is, to its credit, quite a valid decision to make against the easier, potentially more straightforward option of just reroll hits and wounds. It also mentions that they are not leaders, so these guys can't be your warlord, but they are synapse, so they will help you spread that synapse buff around the rest of your army. And of course, they are going to be monsters. So in formations or detachments, should I say, like the Crusher Stampede that we saw yesterday, they are going to get some benefits, especially from that. So they can work quite well in a variety of armies, but just based on their stat lines alone, I do think they are looking fairly, fairly good. Of course, Points are going to make and break them, as they always do for anything in 40k, but I think these rules from what we've seen, they do seem quite fun, and based on that stat line, as well as the psychic attacks we've seen, and the uh, Toxin Injector Harpoon, they look like they can actually do a fair bit of damage to the enemy as well, and they are going to be really quite good at going after whatever unit you really want them to get rid of, so as long as they're not absurdly overcosted. I think these could be quite valuable additions to your army. But as always, I'd really love to know what you think of these rules. Will you be picking one up to add to your high fleet? And which are you going to be building, the emissary or the assimilator? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I'll catch you later, guys.